Say hello. Hello. <laughs> this is the gift that keeps on giving the Harjan loop. Good morning and welcome to the Harjan loop day two. So this is the Harjan loop region. This is where we started and yesterday we came all the way up here and we were planning to stay here. We didn't get very far at all. We only got about 50 kilometers through like a 300 and something kilometer trip. So we have a lot of ground to cover today. But anyway, it's 6 a.m. It's before sunrise. We're just waiting for Camilla to come downstairs and we'll hit the road. But it's starting to look absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to get on the road and watch this sunrise. Check out where we stayed last night. It's like a plywood building. These are what the dorm rooms are. Around $4. We decided to stay in the private rooms, even though we were the only people here. This is a private room. $8. This one here was my room where I slept last night. The bed was a little bit hard, but I slept really well. But there's no privacy, just completely open. But we were the only people here, so it was all right. Have a good trip. Ah, Thank you. Terimakazi. Very busy morning, all the morning markets are out. All the locals are selling their wares. There's a ton of buses around. It's a bit chilly, but I kind of like that. I'm sure it's gonna get very hot later. Look at that. All right, we got some miles to crunch today. So let's get underway. And that rhyme. <laughs> That's where we were planning to stay last night. 86 kilometers away. We'll get there. <laughs> we're just coming back for fuel. Check out this traffic. <laughs> There's buffalo in the road. Oh, there's more! There's more! Hello. Hello, full. Full. Well, so, if you missed the last video, which was day one on the Harjan Loop, you should definitely go back and watch it. But just in case, this is Kevin. This is my 110cc Honda Blade semi automatic scooter and so far I absolutely love him. It's been a long time since I've ridden a bike with gears and I'm very much enjoying it, especially with the views that we have. Kevin seems to be very fuel efficient, which I absolutely love. And he's a really great ride, very smooth. and I don't feel worried at all about him breaking down. And he's gonna be my steed for 350 kilometers on this trip. Me and Kevin, we're gonna get to know each other really well. Honestly, this place looks like something out of Avatar, the Atlas Mountains. I know they're based in China, but actually we're very close to China and we're going to go see it today, but it does look incredible. <laughs> These roads have gotten absolutely stunning. It's like winding along the side of the mountain. Instead of going like up a mountain or down, we're now just going along the side of a mountain. By far, by far, the best bike ride I've ever done. And I don't think it's gonna get topped anytime soon. But I think the plan now is to get to the next town, the next settlement. I just pulled over on the side of the road to change the GoPro battery, but this road has been absolutely amazing. I feel like the higher we get, the colder it is though. But the landscape of this Haijan loop just keeps changing. It goes from like valleys to mountains, and now we're in forest. I didn't know we'd see forest on this, but I'm happy about that. But these twists and turns around the edge of the mountains that you would have seen on the GoPro is just unreal. But anyway, we need to get to the next town. It's probably like, what? I think it's less than 20K away now, so we need to get some breakfast. So we'll see you at the next town. I think we are officially up in the clouds. I can feel moisture in the air. It feels like it's raining, but I don't think it is. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Did you see the baby goat? The baby goat was so cute. <laughs> baby goat. There is nothing I would want more right now, apart from maybe my girlfriend to be here. That would be awesome. I've got to be careful in these corners. I don't want to be going through that gap that they so conveniently left there for people to fall through. Yeah, food. <laughs> so we've just stopped for breakfast. It's now 9 a.m. So we've been on the road for just over two hours trying to stop as little as possible because we've got a lot to cover today. But we found this nice little place here. The menu was in Vietnamese. Google Translate came in clutch. But it looks like a very popular place here to stop. There's like rest piss stops on the side where you can get like snacks and drinks. And then there's uh, like the love hearts that you get in Bali. They're really touristy things that I have no idea why people use them. But yeah, I'm going to enjoy a chicken and beef fried noodles and a Coke. And then we're going to go to Yemin taste test. <laughs> 
They're good. Like the, the uh, homestay last night. So this is our little crinkled map. This is where we started. And then we stopped around here. And this morning we have made it all the way. We're almost at Yen Min. But we need to go to Lung Ku. There's a palace here that's worth seeing. This pass is apparently very beautiful for photos. Then into Dong Van, and then we're gonna go to Ma Pi Leng and stay here. Got a lot to do today. Mountain of a fairy breast. I don't know, I think <laughs> we missed the mountain. Maybe next time. Oh, actually. This one, I think. Yeah, we might come back past the fairy's breast. I'd like to see some breasts. So, breakfast of fried noodles was actually really nice. It's been really chilled sitting here, actually. The view was great, it was really peaceful. And then the tour buses started turning up. <laughs> but with full bellies, it's now time to get back on the road and see if the Hajan Loop can surprise me anymore because I would be very surprised if the views get any better. Oh, all of the bunting spinning. I think the wind just picked up. We need to get going because I think there's rain coming from that way. We're gonna try and outrun the rain. Back on the road. My God, he's on the wrong side of the road. When the big trucks go past, the exhaust fumes come out the side of the trucks and you get a nice blast of warm air and it's kind of pleasant. Yen Min. This is where I'd originally planned on the itinerary to stay. And it's taken us until, I think it's like 10 a.m. the next morning now to get here. But Camilla had a good point. She's glad and I am glad as well that we didn't decide to do that ride in the dark last night because the views were so insane. We're just gonna keep powering through until we reach the next nice mountain pass or I think there's a palace is what we're planning to go to next. If I can do all the hard work riding the bike, then you guys could just sit back and enjoy the views. double fence this one just to make sure nobody's going off that edge <laughs> I feel like we're in a whole new landscape again it's now black rock this is nuts this looks like Iceland like really really like Iceland I feel so small I'm a, such a tiny human being wow I hope that I'm incredibly mistaken but that seems like rain. Got my fingers crossed, it does not rain. I've been very lucky with the weather. I feel it, I've got my luck, it's staying. Still gonna be lucky. All right, we drove past it once, but we've made it to the next stop. Lung Kam Cultural Tourist Village, or Lang Van Hoa Du Lik Lung Kam. <laughs> Something like that. But there's some sort of like palace here that I wanted to come see. So let's just go check it out. So I don't know which one, but this is definitely the settlement or the area of one of the ethnic groups. And they're all along the sides here with their stalls selling lots of spices by the looks of it. And there's a woman in a field burning some stuff as well. But it smells really good. <laughs> it's the youngest shopkeeper I've ever seen. What have you found? Dresses. Dresses. I guess it's like some type of typical Vietnamese. They're really beautiful. Look at this one. You're gonna buy it? Yeah, of course. You can rent them. If you want to rent one, you can rent one. <laughs> really? Should I? Up to you. You can really immerse yourself in the cultural village. Yeah? I think so. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait for Camilla. She's going to put on one of the very, very traditional ethnic group dresses. So, uh, stand by. Do you feel immersed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. wow. The crown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a modern take on. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, for 30,000, not a bad deal. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm fully immersed in the culture right now. Like a Northwest Vietnamese princess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Looks like it's lunchtime in this little local village. 10k. Everything up here in North Vietnam is so cheap. I don't really know what's up here, to be honest. Like, I read that it's like a, a palace. I don't really know what palace it's gonna be, but, oh, uh, okay. So I've heard of this one right here. This is the House of Pao from the film, The Story of Pao, which is a Vietnamese film I have no idea about, I've never watched, but it's apparently very famous here because of this. I have read about this. I Googled this before we came. Just as like a traditional Vietnamese house. It looks really cool though. When you go past the House of Pal, it's just hills. I hate hills. Every day there are hills. <laughs> yeah. This is very rustic, like something that I would think like a Vietnamese village from 50, 60, 70 years ago would look like. It's quite cool to experience. Yeah. 
Okay, I think this path just leads to that brick house up there. I don't think that's worth going up to. I think the main attraction here is Pal's house. I think that's what we're paying for to get in. So let's go check out Pal's house some more. Oh wow, that looks even older. I should have came in here before. That's beautiful. It really feels like, you know, early 1900s, sort of Asian, even Chinese times. Like I've seen houses like this on people's photos from China. See, I'm not Vietnamese, so I don't know anything about this movie at all. So I Googled it and it was once the shooting scene for a famous Vietnamese movie and is now a must-see destination in the Haijan province. The house is home to typical upland architectures, ethnic minority peoples, simple way of life and humble locals. It's been the home of four generations and belongs to Mr. Muasua Pao. And the entire house consists of three U-shaped rows with earth wall construction and there's some more in there as well. But yeah, there you go. That gives you a little idea of what this is supposed to be. Just a very small slice. I'm sure it goes deeper, but it's still stunning. And we're leaving the town area. Hi! Kids here are so cute, man. I have no idea what they're doing walking up on this mountain road, but they're so cute. Damn, look at that mountain pass. Look at this place. We've gone from Avatar to like town to Iceland to fucking space. <laughs> I have no idea how these sort of things would form. Oh my god, a little kid fell over. <laughs> Lunku, 26 kilometers to go. Just under an hour, I think. Whoa! <laughs> look at the roads we're gonna ride on. And I really wish Sada was here to experience this with me. She would love this. We'll have to come back. If you ever come to do the Hajang Loop, which you definitely should, you should make it number one priority on your itinerary for Vietnam. But it needs to be done on a bike. If you have never ridden a bike, probably wouldn't recommend this as your first experience. However, you can book tours. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can also do it privately as well and just hire a driver. But don't do it in a car. I feel like this entire experience would not be the same in a car. This needs to be done on a bike. I mean, look at it. What is this place? Just enjoy this epic view while we wait for Camilla to catch up. Nuts, absolutely crazy. Case in point, these buses completely on my side of the road as they come around the corner. They don't give a shit, they'll just push bikes to the side or off the edge. Oh. Oh. I'm so done. Are you hungry? Yeah. Should we have some food before we tackle the uh, stairs? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so we've made it to the Lung Ku flag. It's up there. But first, we're hungry. So we're gonna go for some food. There's ice cream. I don't know if ice cream's gonna fill me up. I think it's gonna be ice cream and a drink and then up the stairs. But I might try one of these Red Bull. Red Bull and an ice bubbles. cream. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen an ice cream with a view this good? No, I didn't think so. All right, let's tackle these stairs. It doesn't look like there's that many, so it shouldn't be too bad. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Again, really, really cheap for something that I assumed was going to be a really, really, really busy place because it's a very, very popular spot to come to this and see China in the distance. 10K, empty parking lot. All right, let's tackle the stairs. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> good start, good start. We're about halfway up and I'm fucked. Lots of little stairs, lots of burning legs. Oh, wow. Oh, so close. I can see it there. Ooh. The view when you turn around though is amazing. Oh. Made it. That was harder than I expected. Over there is China. Oh, give me a sec. <sighs> Got there. One of the most northern points of Vietnam. Glad to make it. <laughs> so, looking at the map, we face this way. Everything in the distance is China. That big tower on top of the hill over there, that's probably China. On three sides, although the closest side is definitely over there. It's a proper amazing view though, like proper amazing view. So I've just come around the other side to take some B-roll and I found a door. 
I think we should go inside. You know damn well, we are going up there. Okay, it's quite high. More bloody stairs. Hi. Hello. 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 Seems to be a lot of friendly locals at this tower. They are all wants to say hello, which is great. I'm almost there. <sighs> Made it. I was there a minute ago. I just wanted to fact check on the map. But this is the most northern point of Vietnam. Well, somewhere over there, just not too far, is the most northern point of Vietnam. This is as far as it goes. There's a big road down there that goes a little bit further, but I don't know how far you can go before you hit the border or before you're not allowed. And there's this really cool looking like temple over there on the hill. It looks very Chinese, but it could be Vietnamese as well. I assume it's definitely within the borders still. So yeah, it's dope. There are stairs here, so we did skip some stairs. We came up this road to here, but you could have come up those stairs as well. All right, that was pretty cool. I give it that. The view, absolutely gorgeous. Being this close to China, being at the northernmost point of Vietnam, 10K for the price, perfect, really cheap. Drove halfway up, so I didn't have to take as many stairs. Can't get much better than this, apart from the annoying Chinese tourists who almost knocked Camilla's phone out of her hand when she was at the top of the pole. <laughs> oh dear. But anyway, it's an hour and a half until it gets dark now. And we have an hour and a half of driving to do. Unfortunately, ignore the views if they're good and get to uh, the next point before it gets dark. So looks like we left at just the right time. There's a ton of tourists just turned up. So many. <laughs> Talk about timing. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't empty up there by any stretch of the imagination, but it's gonna be very busy up there with all those people. And a lot of them are wearing military uniform, which is interesting. We're back at the bikes now. Time to hop on and go find where to stay tonight and get some dinner and chill out and relax and call my girlfriend, because I miss her. Let's do this. Let's go. Hello? One more to buy 5,000 Hello? Uh, one more to buy 5,000. Oh, okay. So you should add it to the ticket price. So 15,000 to the ticket, easy. <laughs> I have a feeling that the light on this journey as the sun goes down is gonna be fucking epic and I'm very excited. I mean, look at this already. Look at it, it's so golden. We have 19K of the same road to do to get back to the main ring road. And then uh, I'll see you guys there probably because I'm not gonna show you the same road twice. Not unless the light makes it unreal and then I'll show you. But otherwise, I'll see you there. So we are just on these tree trails heading to Don Van, we're very close. And then I think past Don Van we'll have another 35 to 40 minute drive. I'm not sure what I'm gonna see on the way, so I think I'm just gonna give you a driving montage, a nice acoustic driving montage. Enjoy this montage. Oh, I caught that on camera. I'm pretty sure he just lamped his younger brother. Just another epic view to finish off today's riding. Like, like that is insane. Who gave Vietnam the right to have something this beautiful? Damn, son. We're very, very close now. What are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> High five, we made it, but you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Well, we made it to Mia Vak. It took a little bit longer than expected, but it was all right. It got a little bit treacherous. It got a bit dark, but the views were insane. Like this pass we just did was crazy, but we found this little town. It's kind of strange. It seems like really modern, like really new. Hard to tell because it's dark. So I'm going to show you guys around in the morning, but tonight we're completely done. It's time to go to bed. It's time to go to sleep. We have another big day tomorrow. I think we have a full like four or five hours driving with no stops to get back to Hajang. Tomorrow is the last day on the loop and I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this. We've got one more Hajang loop video coming and I will see you soon.